Today, we're going to talk about human development and its measures. It's my great pleasure to welcome Selim Jehan, the director of the Human Development Report Office at the United Nations Development Program in New York, to our massive open online course on global statistics. Good morning, Selim, and welcome to our course. Thank you. Let me straight away go to the, my first question, which is on the historical aspect. Can you briefly recall for us the circumstances and the motivation behind the launch of the first Human Development Report by UNDP in 1990, which included a definition of the concept of human development, as well as a measure of the concept, namely the Human Development Index? Uh, what do you think were the gaps that existed at that time that this um, report and the index and the concept filled compared to other development indicators that were at, uh, prevalent at that time? I think that's a very good question uh, in terms of historical context. Uh, 1990 was the time when there was this uh, structural adjustment, particularly in Africa and Asia. And uh, we know that uh, through the structural adjustment, uh, economies were adjusted but, uh, at the cost of people's lives. Um, there was also the second thing, uh, the economic growth paradigm was dominating the economic thought at that point in time. So because of all these things, uh, I think people were pushed towards more to the periphery and the concentration was more on economic opulence. So it was thought that uh, this, uh, this was the time when there should be a new thinking on in terms of economic paradigm as well as to bring back people to the center of development. And that is precisely why the human development concept and the human development report emerged with that very clear notion that the real wealth of a nation is its people. And a development should be for the people, of the people, and by the people. So I think the major motivation to uh, bring out the human development report was at this particular point that there should be people-centered development. And you talked about the measure also. Uh, we thought at that point in time that it's not enough just to talk about a concept, but it is also necessary to come up with a particular measure. And the Human Development Index, uh, which is the uh, crown jewel in the whole uh, human development report and also the human development thinking in terms of measurement, actually tries to uh, measure the human well-being from a broader perspective. Um, it does not take uh, its focus only on economic opulence, but also looks at other aspects of human lives in which human beings value. Thank you very much for this historical perspective. And let me also congratulate HDRO and UNDP for having launched this initiative some 25 years ago now and having actually shifted the development paradigm to a completely new level and putting, as you said, people at the center of discussion. Now let's consider the Human Development Index in itself. And it has become almost the brand name, brand associated with UNDP. And also consider the theoretical basis of it, which is the uh, capability approach of Amartya Sen. According to this approach, development is the expansion of the freedom to choose of an individual to choose the life that uh, he or she has reason to value. So um, how do you think that this capability aspect is reflected in this index? And in other words, what are the major strengths of this index? I think the Human Development Index is a measure of functionings actually and functionings are the things that people value to do or to be. For example, a long and healthy life, knowledge, a decent standard of living. And we also know that capabilities are the kind of the set of functionings that people choose. So being a measure of functionings in the first place, the HDI then by default becomes a measure of capability and that is the linkage. And we also know that uh, the capabilities by reflecting the choice that you have uh, represents freedom. And in that sense, development is freedom. So the HDI, first of all, being a measure of functionings is also a proxy for it being a measure of capability. So that is how the capability approach is reflected in the Human Development Index. In terms of its strength, I think the first thing is that um, it is a broader measure of human well-being uh, going beyond uh, the income per capita, for example, 
um, it may be as vulgar as GDP per capita, but it is not as blind as GDP per capita to the broader aspects of human lives. Uh, the second strength of it, it is simple, because you may come up with a particular uh, composite index, but if it, it is too difficult to explain it to policy makers, to people, then it l loses its value and also its credibility. So, the second strength of the HDI is it is simple. The third I believe that the methodology is uh, quite straightforward. So, there is also the um, scope for experimenting with it. For example, uh, you can keep the dimensions of it as it is and then you can also choose different kinds of indicators to reflect those dimensions. And a lot of national human development reports have also done it. Fourth, I think um, its strength is that it can be used for advocacy purposes. In fact, a lot of the civil society organizations in different countries have used it to ad for advocacy purposes, for uh, pressuring governments to uh, change their expenditure patterns, uh, to undertake different sets of policies and all kinds of things. And finally, its strength lies in the fact that it can be disaggregated. It can be disaggregated between men and women in, uh, in terms of regions in a large country, in terms of ethnic groups, uh, in terms of race and that basically can give you a more complete picture of the uh, kind of human development achievements that the society as a whole uh, has made. Uh, average can mask a lot of things, but by disaggregating you actually have a true picture of where the pockets of deprivations are which groups of people are marginalized. I think that's a great strength of the HDI. Okay, now let me go to the other side of the coin and imagine for a moment that you are an outsider as far as UNDP or HDRO is concerned. What do you see are the sh possible shortcomings, if there are any, of this index and how would you address them? Well, um, I believe in self-criticism and I'm a reflective person, so I don't have to be an outsider. Even as an out insider, I think uh, uh, we are very much aware and I also recognize some of the shortcomings of the HDI. To start with, as you know, that this is a composite index and the composite index always has its weaknesses. Um, a composite index uh, sometimes is not uh, very robust. A composite index sometimes uh, loses its predictability if you add too many uh, indicators or variables to it. So, uh, the Human Development Index or the HDI also shares the kind of the weaknesses of the composite index, that's first. Uh, the second problem with this particular index is that a uh, lot of the indicators included in this index are stock variables and they are not flow variables. So, as a result, I think they change very little over time and that is a frustration that many countries and the policy makers feel because they are undertaking policies, they are undertaking measures to improve the lives of people. But even then, those are not reflected in uh, some of the indicators. For example, life expectancy at birth does not change overnight. It takes time, it takes a lot of events to uh, happen to change that particular thing. I think that is its uh, second uh, weakness. The third weakness I would say of this HDI is uh, it gives sometimes equal weights to different dimensions and I think lots of the experts have said that well there are always hierarchy of choices and neither individuals nor societies value all those indicators all those dimensions equally and if that is true then there has to be some kind of a weights not equal weights that need to be explored uh, whether in a particular situation uh, those weights change but the problem with those kinds of weights is that it is a social choice and sometimes you do not know the social choice uh, which is valued more, which is valued less. And I think the Human Development Index also avoids that question by making that assumption that the dimensions included in that particular index are equally valued. Whether it is valid or not, that is a separate issue, but I think uh, to start with that gives a kind of a starting point for that index. So, I think uh, in particular these are the some of the weaknesses of this 
index. It is interesting that you bring up the point of the weights because the weights also mean that there is the aggregation of the composite index means also there is substitutability. And then the question arises as to you know how many dollars uh, one year extra year of life is equivalent to how many dollars and then that could raise some ethical questions and other things.